Hi, and welcome to episode 3 of Learn Rosin Now. Today we're going to be taking a look at the C Sharp Syntax Rewriter and the C Sharp Syntax Walker classes. Uh, to start, I've opened up uh, just a basic console application here, and I've added the Microsoft uh, Code Analysis package to, to our project here. So uh, what we'll do is, before getting into the classes, we'll take a look at, again at these, the tree that's generated for, for you know, this this class that we've provided. And I've generated a little DGML diagram of, of what it looks like. So we've got sort of our class declaration as a root node, and it's got a method declaration in it, um, and it's got the, the name main here. So nothing too, too surprising. So the way that these, these classes work is you feed them a node, and then both the rewriter and the visitor will perform a depth first traversal of the tree that you provided. So if we passed it this class declaration node, um, the classes would first visit this class, then they'd visit program, then they'd visit this brace, then they'd go to the next child, which is method declaration, then to the child of that, static, then to predefined type, then to void, then to main, then to the next child, which is this parameter list, and it would essentially keep uh, on through continuing uh, to visit all of these nodes one at a time until it finally got to the end. I mean, you might notice that if you read these names off from left to right, you'll get back the program that we parsed in. So class, program, open brace, static, void, main, empty arguments, and then a block. So um, this is this is sort of the way that these C# -sharp syntax rewriters and visitors um, uh, work with our code. So the best way to get comfortable with these APIs is to just go ahead and start using them. So we'll go ahead and start creating a, a walker here. Public my walker and inherit from C sharp syntax walker. Public class. And we can go ahead and do a public override and we get IntelliSense shows us a list of available methods for us to override and you can see there's quite a few here. Um, there's actually one for every single uh, different kind of syntax that exists. So you've got your class declaration syntax, your, your method declaration syntax, everything from lambdas to catches, all of that good stuff is in there. Um, the simplest thing I think to do for us to start is to override uh, the visiting of tokens. So we'll do um, we'll get access to every single token in our program in a depth first order. So if you sort of jump back to this GGML, that means for a program like this, we're gonna be accessing only the green nodes and we'll never get access to these blue nodes here, which represent syntax nodes. So we'll be only uh, accessing the green syntax tokens. And you can sort of uh, toggle the granularity you'd like to visit by changing which methods you're overriding and, and what you're doing with them. So I think what we'll do is we'll just, you know, create a collection of these things. So we'll do, uh, we'll create a string builder here, public string builder. And every time we visit one of these tokens, we're going to just go sp dot uh, append and then token dot to full string. And you'll notice um, that there's a, a two full string method on token and syntax node, and there's also just a two string. And the difference between these these two methods is two full string includes the trivia um, that's attached to the token. So that's that uh, leading white space, the tabs, the new lines, all, all that stuff that necess doesn't necessarily matter to compilation, but sort of makes it look good. So we'll we'll just have a little simple walker here. It's just going to visit all of the nodes. And up here we'll um, we'll create an instance of it. Our walker equals new my walker, and we need to pass a syntax node to this walker so we can um, start visiting something. So we're going to need to build a tree so we can we can get access to a C sharp syntax node, and we'll do that the same way we did last episode. C sharp syntax tree dot parse text, and this allows us just to feed a C sharp program in there, um, and you know really easily build a tree. We'll keep it simple, class C with just a basic method, almost identical to the uh, to the syntax tree we were taking a look at and visualizing earlier. Um, now we just need the the root, so we need that first node. Var root equals tree dot get root, and this gives us um, the root syntax uh, node, and, and we can go ahead and pass this to our walker. So we'll do walker dot visit 
and we can pass this root node and sort of kick things off by visiting here. Um, and now we should have uh, a string to look at. If our result is equal to walker.sb is what we called our string builder, we have to go dot to string. And it looks like my thing didn't work. Oh yes, there's um, one important catch here with these C-sharp these syntax walkers, and this one bit me a few times. Um, when, you, oh, when you implement these walkers, and this, this is a big thing, um, they're originally set up to only visit the nodes. So in order to sort of perform faster and not visit all the trivia and all the tokens, they actually are set originally just to visit these syntax nodes. Um, and this one cost me, you know, an hour of figuring out why on earth is my my uh, C sharp syntax walker not working. And it turns out you have to um, implement this uh, constructor here, and the you have to, you know, call the base constructor. And you'll see here now we've got this C sharp syntax wa syntax walker depth option. So we can tell it how deep we want it to. Um, to, to travel in these C-sharp syntax nodes. So this is sort of like a quick way to make it faster if you're only looking at nodes or make it more complete if you need to look at tokens or trivia. And we've got a few different options here. And, and since we're visiting the tokens, we're gonna go ahead and change that to token. So now when our walker is created, whoops, um, it will call the base uh, constructor and, and get us going. And right away we can see that we've got everything everything here. Um, just to sort of show you quickly the, the difference between two string and two full string, we can go ahead and change this. Out. And you'll see that all that nice formatting disappeared. All our trivia is gone and everything's kind of smushed together. So that's a, a basic use for the, the C-sharp syntax uh, walker. We'll do one more quick example where we'll do, instead of overriding this visit token, what we'll do is public override uh, let's do visit method declaration visit method declaration we can do sb dot uh, append node dot to string and um, you'll see here that you know now we've got access to just the, the node itself uh, a quick quick thing to notice here is that you need to have um, when visiting uh, syntax nodes, you need to call these base.visit method declarations or base.visit node, whatever whatever the name you're overriding is, you'll have to call base.visit that. And the reason for that is if you want to, you know, go deeper down into the tree, that's where sort of uh, the scaffolding logic takes place. So in order to keep going down into the tree, uh, you're going to have to call these base methods. If, for example, you said, oh, I only want to visit method declarations and I, you know, for the you know, the sake of speed or something. I don't want to go any deeper. You can you can get rid of this. And in our case, it actually doesn't make a difference because there's nothing interesting that we're doing uh, deeper down in the tree. So I know I said at the start of this video that we were going to uh, tackle both the walker and the rewriter, but we're already 10 minutes in and I want to keep these videos to about 10 minutes. So I'm going to save the rewriter for uh, episode four. And what we'll do is we'll pick up there in a couple days. So um, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the videos. And if you have any comments or questions, just leave them in the uh, comments below. Thanks a lot.